Hey everyone, my name is Kay Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am now launching a new series called No Shortcuts. And the intention of this series is to share with you my journey into entrepreneurship um, at this season in life. Um, ideally, the whole series is basically showing us and showing you all that there is no shortcuts in this life. But if the least I can do is share with you what I know and what I've learned while also showing you my process and documenting my process, I hope that it's going to inspire you. I hope that it's going to encourage you. And I hope that it's just going to support you in your journey. Um, but I think if there's anything that I've been learning is that I just have to go through it. I just have to actually do the thing. And so... This is going to be also a resurgence of this YouTube channel as it is my first YouTube channel. I think about when I first started here 10 years ago and I just think like, I can't, I can't not document the process of, of, of the path that I'm on. And so I think that is something that I've learned is that I'm on some uncharted territory. I'm walking an unknown path. And unfortunately, on the path I've been on, I haven't found a lot of role models along the way. And so I decided, if not now, when? And if not me, who? And so I hope that you find yourself on this channel um, watching the process unfold in front of your eyes. But also, I hope that you have the strength and the courage to also take on the challenge to do it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, I can show you my process, share my experience, show you, you know, my, you know, from A to Z, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to go through it yourself. And so this is just documentation to be like, yeah, it could be scary. Yeah. There's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. There's some risk and there's some fear in there, but if I can do it, you can do it. And so, um, yeah, this is just going to be the process of sharing what it means to share some shortcuts to know shortcuts and also to realize there is no shortcuts in this life and the realization in that we're all just walking each other home anyways. So there's no rush. We don't have to get the shortcuts. We don't have to, you know, go around the bushes and things of that sort. Like we can just go through it the way that it's meant to happen for us. And so this first season of no shortcuts is going to be based off of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I said it entrepreneurship and I never thought that I'd actually be here, but I'm also not surprised that I am. And so um, I'm just going to share a little bit about how I found myself in this situation. Um, I think the best way to put it is the best way to put it is that my friend pointed out that I had 52 experiences on my LinkedIn. If you don't know what LinkedIn is, it's basically the professional social media of today's world in 2024. And so I thought that was normal. And apparently it's not. And she messaged me. She's like, you live, you've lived well, my friend, you've lived well. And I was like, mm, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> that was me tasting a lot of different things. And this YouTube channel was showing you all the process of me tasting a lot of different things. And to come back 10 years later to realize, um, the things I was tasting are the things that really tasted good um, and what I want to continue doing. And that's why I was like, I need to come back to this channel and see what's up with everybody uh, that subscribed in the first place and wanting to, again, show you uh, my journey in hopes that it encourages you to continue on your own and supporting you along the way. But yeah, entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is pretty sexy, right? I think that there's three definitions that are kind of rolling around um, in today's age. And so I think for the most part, most people think entrepreneurship is folks who are like scaling their businesses. They make a lot of money. They're really greedy people. They're rich people. We don't tax the rich, all of these things, right? Um, we know that it's a, it's a big role in, in what it means to be in this world. And then I think there's a second version of entrepreneurship that we've seen when it comes to like Instagram and social media and things of that sort. And it's something that's really sexy. It's like everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to own their own business. Everyone wants to, yeah, say that they are figuring it out for themselves. Um, and then I think there's this new wave of entrepreneurship that's coming about that might be something that's a little bit older also. I think entrepreneurship is coming around to to be more about freedom. You know, right now in 2024, we're in a place where uh, we're coming out of the pandemic and 
COVID-19 pandemic specifically, and the world has completely shifted and changed, right? We know that a lot of us are working from home. We're doing a lot of remote jobs. We're doing um, a lot of virtual stuff. And so I think we're trying to create opportunities for ourselves that allows us to do that, not being bound to offices and confinements and and walls and um, things of that sort. And so I think when I think about entrepreneurship for myself, my first experience goes back to my mom. You know, I think I had to, I have to really look at the definition of entrepreneurship, but I imagined my mom and it wasn't until I learned some recent language that maybe she's not an entrepreneur, but she's more self-employed. Um, but I didn't know the difference growing up until very recently and realizing, um, yeah, my mom got to do whatever she wanted in it in to some extent, but she kind of just put herself in a different kind of position of still, um, working for herself tirelessly and someone as a young person watching my mom start her own business it was called helping hands it was an adult care business and so i grew up with a lot of adults around me a lot of aging adults and then also a lot of adults passing so it wasn't new for me to find the ambulance at my house when i came home from school and so i just saw what my mom had to do you know and the way she described it is that she'd have to clean butts right clean dirty butts old old babies that are on their way out, you know, and beyond that not being very desirable, I was also like, I saw and I witnessed my mom, you know, burning the midnight oil and burning both ends of the candle, right? I saw that she didn't rest. I saw that she didn't play. I saw that she didn't spend time with her family. I saw that she didn't take care of herself. I saw that she didn't um, take care of her health and that she wasn't putting the best food in her body. I saw that she wasn't able to take care of her mental health as she went through um, waves of depression, you know, and thank goodness to Elvis. Ironically, this earring is an is a guitar that says Elvis on it. And it makes me think of my mom. But if it weren't for Elvis and Blue Hawaii in her Korean movies, I don't know if she would have made it out of her depression. And, you know, this is just as a young person witnessing her i go to sleep she's at the you know she's at the desk i wake up she's still at the desk um while i'm on my way out to school you know she's probably falling asleep and i see the smoke of her of her cigarette you know and i see cups of coffee around her and i'm just like that does not look fun <laughs> that does not look enjoyable i mean yeah we were she was making a lot of money i got the fruits of that labor and got to sit under that tree of the shade of that tree um but, you know, as a young person, I missed out on the presence of her, right? I missed out on the engagement. I missed out on the involvement. And that was confusing as a first generation, you know, Filipina in the States. You know, I saw all of my friends and my family, particularly my next door neighbors, where their mom was very involved in their life because they were a stay at home mom. And I just couldn't understand that because my mom stayed at home, but I didn't get that same kind of uh, interaction. And so, yeah, my idea of entrepreneurship was like, absolutely not. And then not only that, of course, being first gen um, and having to observe the the way that she would send money back home. She would send boxes back home. You know, I know that there's a particular word for that. And I the story in my mind was that she just kind of became a bank, you know, and unfortunately, my mom you know, part of her challenges um, and things that she had to learn was boundaries and learning how to say no. But, you know, miss, in the midst of the generation that she's a part of and and what was happening with Filipinos and and um, with the Navy and the nurses and just history in that sense, like, I think that there was just, you know, very not new conversations about if you make it to the land of, of milk and honey in the land of opportunity, then you have an obligation uh, to send money back home or to send boxes back home. And I don't know if Filipinos will ever know that um, if you're the one that's chosen to go to the land of opportunity, I can't speak on it, but is it all that it's cracked up to be? I can't, you know, I can't say that's a conversation I have to talk about with my mom, but I know that she's said that psh, I'd go back home. She's like, I have to work harder, three times harder, four times harder here um, than I did. Ha I had to do back home. You know, and that that is in due to the systems and the pre prejudices and things of that sort. But yeah, it just wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. And I was just like, I don't want to become an entrepreneur. I don't want to have to figure it out by myself. And I also had to realize, you know, something I've had to think about is thinking about our ancestral days. And I think about our tribes. I'm like, 
you know, if I were to kind of think about who were entrepreneurs back in the day, like, were they the hunters? You know, were they the ones who were in the markets, right? Um, and I had to ask myself, I was like, is that my role in the tribe? And I think more than anything is I know my role in the tribe is that I'm the teacher, you know? And the thing is, though, and where we're at and to fast forward, you know, hundreds of years and things of that sort and what it means to be human today in 2024 is that our educational system that we've created in the past 100, 200, 300 years, however long, um, is not is not conducive for the humans we are today. And so our educational system is crumbling. Um, and I knew that as I was exiting my, not exiting, but I, as I was getting my degree. And I was like, something's gonna change. I don't know what it is, but something's gonna change. Lo and behold, um, it was the pandemic. And so at that time when I knew something was gonna change, I was like, I'm gonna redirect instead of being a English teacher and going back to my high school, I was like, I'm going to become a talk show host. You know, I, I put the pieces together and I was like, how can I make the world my classroom? Um, and how can I just continuously make uh, learning a part of life and not to stop here uh, after I graduate and get my degree, right? I did what my mom wanted me to do. I got a college education. That was the whole point of us moving here. Um, but mom, you didn't help me with what's supposed to happen afterwards. <laughs> and that's where you all got to see the start of this YouTube channel. I was like, oh, I'm just going to figure it out for myself. And I'm just so grateful to be human today because we have access to the internet. I mean, we had access to tools and resources that you're using and watching right now. And so um, fast forwarding now, right? Post pandemic and we, and my predictions were true a decade ago that the educational system was changing. And I was probably the last tale of, of those who believe that the educational system was going to guarantee some level of success. Um, to some extent, you can consider it a scam <laughs> because that was not the case uh, for me, at least, you know, um, being first gen and having to navigate not only first gen in this country, but first gen in college and graduating college um, and, and having this key right? And I don't, and I first of all, don't want to discount my college experience. I would not be who I am without college. I still feel like it's a very important part and vital time in our lives as young people from, from 18 to 22. And more than anything, I think that, um, I think now more than anything, it's, it's having to recreate what, how we're going to support young people through that transition. If they're not gonna choose the educational system, if they're not choosing military, if they're not choosing going uh, to trade school, whatever the case, the options are just different. And and I don't know if we've, we're, I think right now what we're having to do as particularly millennials um, who will eventually become the elders is like, we're having to think of how we're gonna support people in the future without, the, with these structures crumbling, with these systems crumbling, how can we take what was good from it and how can we rebuild it? And I know for myself, and you can jump over to my other channel, that's what's showing up for me as a teacher, right? I'm thinking, how can I create a different kind of school? You know, how can I find different kinds of educators? And how can we teach curriculums for the human, how can we teach curriculums for the humans and the skills and talents and resources we need to develop today? And so that's why I think entrepreneurship, was it in my wheelhouse? And thinking that that was something I was going to be, I didn't think so. You know, but at the same time, if I look at it from a different perspective, I think about my mom and having that entrepreneurial spirit. When I think about my Lola, my Lolo, they also had their own business. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, you know, I don't have stories about my great grandparents, but to some extent, it's in my blood. And I also have to question, maybe it's in all of our bloods to some extent, right? Like, what if we're all entrepreneurs? you know, and, and we can redefine that. And so for me, I've had to change my perspective and being like, what is an entrepreneur? And so my current definition of that is someone who wants to service to others through their zone of geniuses in terms of the skills, talents, and abilities that they have, um, and wanting to be fully compensated for it, for the value that they bring to the table. As that's always been my pickle when it comes to being an educator. I was like, I do too much. I would have done too much. So shout out to my teacher friends who continued on and who are doing that. Y'all do too much and get paid too little. <laughs> and I was like, not about that. Don't get me wrong. I've been getting paid too little being a barista, but it's because I solve a small problem. I mean, depends on 
your definition of small because it's a big problem for those who don't get their coffee in the morning. But, you know, I solve a small problem in, in terms of the grand scheme of problems that are able to be solved. And I give you your coffee every morning. Um, I want I do want to point out as someone who's a barista for almost a decade, um, we solve big problems. <laughs> and the biggest problem is connection. Right. So I just if you are a barista, I send so much love to you. If you get your coffee from a barista every morning, um, just know that I know that you should know that um, they're a much bigger part of your life than you think it is. And I would love and encourage you to be nicer to your baristas and anyone really in the customer service um, industry, because uh, we cannot function without them. And so without that, with, with that being said, um, entrepreneurship and being alive today. It's being compensated for the value that you bring, not for the time that you spend. Um, and that's the difference. That's the difference between the educational system is that they were teaching us um, to learn a very specialized skill so that they can plug us into the system, into the cog, into the vehicle called the company. And you do this specific task for this many hours. Um, and you will be compensated for it and you will be told that you'll get a 401k. You'll be told you get a social security. You'll be told that you will have, um, some sort of stability at the end of the time. But really those were kind of golden chains and handcuffs y'all, um, to keep you there, to spend the time, the very, very finite resource that can never be non-renewable. That's not renewable. Um, and keep you there for safety, stability, um and predictability of thinking of what's going to happen in the future and of course as we know with the pandemic that has completely changed everything and so for me to find myself in entrepreneurship it's all literally almost like i have no other choice i already shared with all of you i have 52 experiences on my linkedin you know and that's just the stuff i had time to upload i'm sure there's so many other things i could have done um but to give you all how this happened just kind of zooming in to what's actually happened is um my last employed job <laughs> was working for a church and i remember telling myself um if not here then where you know like it's a church right like um it was a non-denominational church by the way and i don't know what that means to some extent i don't it, it just kind of happened you know so the, the story is not about how i ended up at a church the story is I'm glad that that was my last employed experience and it probably won't be my last, you know what I mean? Because I think naturally stability, fear of stability and, and financial stability will come up and I might have to backtrack again and that's okay. But I know that when it comes to this moment and saying like, I'm going to pursue entrepreneurship um, no matter what it takes <laughs> and, and my, I might fumble on that a thousand times, but it being the church, I'm so happy that it happened that way. Um, because I feel like God was building a new foundation for me, a new foundation for the life that he has planned for me. Um, so I was there for two years, y'all, and the skill set fit perfectly. And, um, you know, realizing that all work works. Okay. So yes, I was doing work and work that I was very competent in. Um, that was quite easy for me. Um, and I didn't feel like I, I, I outgrew the tasks that were being asked of me. Um, Okay. So the skill set fit perfectly. And, you know, I was there for a year and a half and I did some amazing things there. I was really proud of myself. Actually, I was able to coach someone and we opened up like a wellness space. And then I also um, had the, the chance of actually figuring out having a little taste of entrepreneurship where I was able to open up Commons Creative um, and where I was able to bring this vision to life of like a coffee shop co-working space um, within the church. And so I thought that was super fun and exciting, but also at the same time, it, it was, it was a lot to manage, you know? And so after a year and a half, um, I started just gaining some sort of frustrations and I had to start asking myself like, okay, what's the next best move? Because like I told you all before, if it wasn't here, then where was I going to go? And I remember in the beginning, before I even took on the position, I was like, if it's not here in a church, like I'm going to have to go out on my own. But I was really like on the idea I was going to be there for a long time because I knew that my skill set and the work that we were doing and the work that was happening within me, like is something that I wanted to build a foundation on. Um, but fortunately and unfortunately, you know, just natural transitions were happening. And um, 
in a very unplanned way, it just kind of dominoed into effect of literally we had a meeting on on our weekly meeting on Tuesday. And then literally the next day, which was the first, um, we were like, hey, like it's I think this is going to be a good stopping point. And so it happened very quickly. But ironically, when that happened, and I just want to be transparent with y'all, I was probably working, I was getting paid for 20 hours a week, but I had condensed my work processes down to like five hours. Um, and so the ironic part is that once the job actually ended, immediately within that week or two, I'm not saying like, it was like this nice clean break, I had to process and journal and all these things. But like, I felt released and I felt relieved and I just started putting myself out there in ways that I know that I've always wanted to, but like, it just, it just felt like the floodgates opened. Um, and we're only a month in and that's, and that's something that I want to share with all of you is like, I'm going to be posting these videos only once a month to give time and space for life to happen, but also time and, um, time and attention towards reflection, um, and realizing like, this is going to be very much uncharted territory. It's going to be, uh, an unknown path. And so um, that's really the whole point of all this. And so like, again, it's crazy how you can just feel what's the word? Like, I don't know how to explain it. But you, just like all of that energy that I was putting into that space, even if it was just for five hours, there was still this like, this spiritual hold on me in that place where like, in a good way, but like, there was just so many people. I was pouring myself into so many people. So yeah, the work of being paid was 20 hours, 10, five hours, whatever case. But the relational work was, that was a, that was like two full-time jobs. And so the moment like I was released from that and not having to be in leadership and not having to, you know, be a mentor in that way, I was like, ooh, I can just sit back and receive. But not only that, I can take all that energy back and put it into um, the vision that's been put on my heart. And so I'm so excited to share this process with you all because you're going to see, I mean, you have 10 years of content right here, but you're going to see that everything that we've been doing here on this channel is going to now overflow to the second channel. And it's like, wow, the things we were talking about early on is now actually happening. And so again, when it comes to this series called No Shortcuts, like, like, I wish I can say it was this easy, but no, it's been a decade, y'all. Y'all have been with me for a decade. And so I want, I encourage you to go to the second channel and to see how all of the ideas that started here are now, the mustard seeds that were planted here 10 years ago are now finally starting to brim and break through the ground. And so I'm so excited to share that with all of you. Um, but more importantly, like I said, I just wanna show you, you know what I'm learning along in the journey and that it's not gonna be pretty, it's not gonna be easy. You all know I come here most truly authentically and transparently here. This is where all the crying on this channel happens, no crying on the other channel. This channel we cry on, the other one, you know, we, we, we act all professional and act grown up sometimes. This one, not so much. But yeah, I'm excited to finally be here with all of you. It's been a long time coming, um, but so, so many things are finally uh, connecting. And so just for a pun on that one, the next channel, connecting the dots. And so we're connecting the dots here back over there. So subscribe to either channel, whichever fits you know, your season that you're in right now, but um, I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited that you're here because uh, there's gonna be so many good things coming to this community that has been dormant for a little bit and that needed to happen. And that's gonna be a different conversation, but stay here for uh, video number two, episode number two for No Shortcuts uh, next month in July. So the goal is the last Sunday of every month um, until, until I feel like entrepreneurship has its, it feels good. And I don't know, this might happen for another two years. I don't know. But ideally, No Shortcuts is going to be about those skills that they didn't teach us in school, right? Health, finances, all those things, spiritual, spiritual well-being, all that stuff. But we're starting with entrepreneurship. So whatever we learn from connecting the dots on the second channel, um, you're going to see it applied and put into action on this channel. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Kay Short. If you want to subscribe, you can. If not, that's okay too, because I would rather you just be looking up from your phones and your laptops anyways. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.